Welcome again, YouTubers, to another Game of Thrones video. Today, I wanted to do another one of my What If videos and talk about one of the big, cool, pivotal moments of the TV show that we saw, and that would be, what if Stannis Baratheon had not shown up after the battle at Castle Black? What would have happened to everyone in the kingdoms if that hadn't gone down? I think there are about eight things that would have possibly changed as a result of this. Some a little more obvious than others, I do admit that. I'm not exactly a renaissance man in my thinking for all of these, but it is important to let them lay out. And remember to check out the end of my video because I'll give you some details about a giveaway that I'm doing that relates to this video. So without further ado, let's start off with the most obvious one at number eight, and that is that the Wildlings take the wall from the Night's Watch. Last we saw before Stannis shows up, the Wildlings and the men of the Night's Watch had just been in a huge battle where a ton of people died, just like Gren the Giant Slayer. It was so sad, it was awful, but we had those people go down and unfortunately the Night's Watch was pretty much licking their wounds at this point. Jon parlayed with Mance Raider to go like, hey, maybe, you know, we don't do this and sacrifice people, but Mance said, I'm going to kill everyone if you all don't bow down. And I'm assuming that the Night's Watch would not have bowed down by that point. So if they had continued to battle, the, definitely the Wildlings would have taken them down. So they would have ended up controlling the wall, but I don't know if they would have necessarily stayed there all that long. Number seven, Jon Snow wouldn't have become Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. Now this is a pretty insignificant one, I do have to admit, but regardless, it is a very esteemed title to be the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, so the fact that he wouldn't have gotten it as a result is kind of a bummer because it's nice to add that to Jon Snow's resume, although that's what eventually ended up killing him essentially but regardless it still is cool to add that there because he got it of course after the battle at the wall and that's when Stannis is like oh well you'll probably lose and uh, Alistair will probably win and by shocking miracle he ended up winning after all so that is something that would have been taken away from the story number six Stannis Baratheon most likely lives because he doesn't have to fight at the Battle of Winterfell, considering there's so many other repercussions that I'll talk about a little bit more in the video uh, that will end up happening instead. Stannis should probably be alive by this point because you have to assume in this video Stannis doesn't show up after the original battle at the wall, so that means he's probably cruising along in the seas as well. So he's probably not in any kind of danger for at least a little while, while some backlash is happening as a result of Mance Raider and his wildling army winning. So he's pretty much out of the line of fire, and he doesn't have to go fight the Boltons yet. So you would think that he also would still be alive. Number five, that means that Shireen probably would have been killed either. And I bring this one in in particular, I have to point it out, although it's a little bit obvious, because so many people were heartbroken with the death of Shireen. I personally didn't care all that much. It was sad, but not that big of a deal. I mean, eventually Mel Sondra was probably going to nudge Stannis and say, hey, King's blood, we need it. And of course, Stannis is going to try to kill himself because he thinks himself to be a prophet. So, Shireen possibly would go down anyway. I think George R. R. Martin even said that she's probably going to go down in the books, uh, just in a different way. So, right now, at least Shireen would be alive because she wouldn't be in any harm of being used as King's blood. The next two kind of go hand in hand, but number four is that the Wildlings will not stay at the Wall, and they're going to go as far south as they possibly can and start attacking castles left and right. That means that they're going to attack the first ones, which is the Umbers, they're going to hit Carhold, they're going to go after the Boltons who hold the Dreadfort and Winterfell, and they're just going to keep going down and down and down. Now, they're not trying to conquest or anything like that, they really just want to get as far south as they possibly can because they know that White Walkers are coming. But eventually they are going to have to run into those men and they're going to try to take them down as much as they can. Or Remember, they're untrained soldiers though, so they can only do so well. Which leads into my number three, which is that the armies of Westeros are going to massacre the Wildlings to the point where there will be none of them left. Unfortunately, despite how many of them there are and how savage they are, I guess you could say, they are definitely going to succumb to the different armies. Then the North may be able to take care of them on their own. I'm not totally sure. Maybe they know well enough to hide from the armies of the North. But once they get anywhere around the mid-region, they get to like the Vale, they get to the River Run, everything like that, it's going to be difficult and eventually torment. Uh, Mance Raider, Rattleshark, everyone's going to be dead in this scenario. And what a bummer, because these wildlings are actually kind of interesting dynamic to have to the story. So I think all this video is confirming is that Stannis is indeed the Manus. My number two, which is arguably the number one of this countdown is, if this happens and Stannis doesn't show up, no one knows how to kill White Walkers really. Because what we know about killing them is, we have Jon, who killed one of them with his Valyrian steel sword, which no one knew coming, John didn't know was happening, the White Walker didn't know it could possibly happen. 
Plus, we also have the dragon glass daggers that we saw buried that Samuel Tarley had found at the Fists of the First Men. Now, Sam knows about it, sure, but Sam was at the wall. If Sam was there when Stannis wasn't, that means that the Wildlings would have attacked, probably killed everyone inside of the wall. So that means Sam would have died as well. Stannis found out about it after he took the wall, and they said Dragonglass seems to kill them. So, if they ended up taking over the Night's Watch, killing all of those men, the Wildlings don't seem to have figured it out by any means, so there's a pretty good chance that, in fact, nobody would have figured out how to kill them until it was already way too late. Of course, you could say Daenerys and her dragons, but we'll see. We don't even know how that's going to go at this point in the books or the show. So I'm not prepared to say that is a good failsafe. And the most obvious number one that I have to put in there is that means the death of Jon Snow. This time for good. If the wall were to be taken over by the Wildlings, no doubt that Jon Snow would have been one of the first targets that would have been killed. Because he is a turncoat to the Wildlings. They knew him. Mance Raider had a little bit of a relationship with him. And the fact that he was just such a prominent member of the Night's Watch, it was important that he would end up going down. That means no continuation of the Targaryens. You lost the Dragon Rider. You lost possibly your heir to the Iron Throne. You lost so much importance in the character of Jon Snow. I know that seems like a failsafe to always say, well, Jon Snow is important. Yeah, he is important. He's probably what A Song of Ice and Fire is all about when it comes down to it. So losing him would would be absolutely crucial to the story and thank god those wildlings didn't win i tell you but that's gonna do it for my video thanks so much for watching as always i love doing these game of thrones videos later on this week i think i'm actually gonna do a live stream of the game of thrones playstation game where i'll be playing it online and i'll be able to kind of stream it onto youtube from there i'll give you more details about that i'm going to try to give it a shot also, I'm having two giveaways going on right now. The first one is to win a Mag the Mighty Funko Pop figure, which you can enter right down below by clicking the link in the description. All I have to do is be a subscriber and also do a few other things like go on Twitter, go on YouTube, leave a comment, Facebook, all that kind of stuff. So you just click on that there. But since it is Sunday and it is all about the beginning of football, I'm also giving away a Jadavian Clowney Funko Pop figure. Yes, I have one of these. All you got to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment down below in this video and I will make sure that you could possibly win. Now, this one's going to be a short giveaway, so that means that tomorrow night, Monday night, yes, yeah, September 12th, I will be picking a winner for this contest, and you will get your Jadavian Clowney pretty soon after that. And of course, check out my other videos. I just did one on The Walking Dead right here. You can see my top five bad guys. I got a lot of stuff coming up for The Walking Dead since that show will be premiering, so check it out. But that's going to do it for the video. Thanks so much for watching as always. Hope you take care. Have an amazing day. Goodbye.